Hey, we're live at the live signing. Jeff Bridges here, and I'm pitching my new book of photography. It's called Pictures, Volume 2. It wasn't Volume 1. This is the second one. And I'm here with my dear friend, Sam Jones right. of Off Camera Fame. It's a wonderful uh, site. If you're not aware of it, check it out. Go to offcamera.com and you'll find out. You'll see a lot of you, about. too. Yeah, yeah, me and all kinds of great cats. I, I, I love that show. It's wonderful. Well, thank you. And thank you for letting me be yeah, your moderator. That's here. right. I love that. Yeah, we're, we're going to... I was just selling your book out on the street corner, so yeah, I appreciate I, you letting I, yeah, me do this. Well, on. you did such a good job. Thank, thank you, yeah. You. Yeah, so uh, we should tell people <laughs> that if they want to get in on the action here oh. and get a book, you can go to premiercollectibles.com slash pictures, and that'll take you straight to a site where you can you can buy this book, and you can get a signed book sent straight to you that you're going to sign yes, live right. right now. Say That's that why again. it's called Live Sign. Premiercollectibles.com slash pictures. That's right. It's a modern oh, word. Modern. Oh, no. Oh. No, I said that wrong, I think. Premier collectibles.com slash pictures. I'm used to, used to that com thing being on the end. Oh, yeah, com.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But anyway. Yeah, no, it's a slash pictures yeah, after the dot com. Go. There you go. Yeah, it's, it's really modern. Um, we should tell people why this book is in existence. And, mm -hmm. um, and I want to say that I'm a giant fan of your work, and I've followed your photography for a long time, being a photographer myself, but also being a fan of your film work and, and, and just cinema in general, these books and, and the pictures you take on your sets when you, when you make films, they are the most unique look into the process of filmmaking I've ever seen. And part of that is because of the access you obviously have being in the center of these amazing mm -hmm. films with the Coen brothers and with John Favreau and all, uh, all kinds of films that you've made throughout your career. But the other part is that you use a very special camera called the Wide Lux. And the Wide Lux, for people who don't know, takes a panoramic picture. Not like the iPhone with the fake panorama, mm -hmm. but a real panorama where the lens actually goes on a little motor and spins around the room. And you get these incredible scenes uh, of, and this incredible perspective on filmmaking, which is both right up in your face and also extremely picturesque mm -hmm. and cinematic. And, and the book is beautiful. Well, and, thank uh, you. and I own many of your, many of your, books already so I'm you know I, I'm, I'm a giant fan and uh, so why don't we just dive right in and yeah. start answering some questions from some fans all and, right. and you can good. start signing and all that stuff yeah. um, we're gonna start out with Bill from Gorman Texas Bill asks what is your favorite genre to play oh gosh well that is an impossible question um, Sorry, Bill. That's yeah, an impossible that's question. an impossible question, <laughs> uh, Bill. I, uh, gosh, uh, I, you know, I like uh, the whole gamut. That's kind of one of the fun things about what I get to do is I get to be in all sorts of different shoes. You know, from you know uh, the dude sure. who has wonderful shoes to be in his jellies, and then the next picture after that was uh, the contender, where I got to play the president of the United States. You know. Talk about a different pair of shoes. From huh? the dude to the president. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I like that. I like that uh, uh, thing. You know, early on in my career, because my father, Lloyd Bridges, got so uh, typecast with that Sea Hunt series that he had. It was He played an underwater uh, diver, you know, and was so successful. And it was wonder, wonderful financially, but it kind of pigeonholed him. Uh, as you know, a diving actor. A lot of people. <laughs> this is a great compliment to him. They said, "God, he, he." They really found a real diver to play that part, you know. But uh, he he ended up getting, uh, you know, a lot of skin diving parts off offers. You Which know? is so, odd because there's not a ton of yeah, skin exactly. diving parts. Yeah, exactly. Well, they made them because that was a hit, you know. It was a, right. So I really tried, you know, seeing how frustrating that was from because he was a you know a Shakespearean actor, a great comedian, you know. Um, so I uh, took a cue from that, and I saw how much frustration he had with that. So I uh, tried to really do my best to mix it up. I'm going to start signing yeah. these things now, too. All right, you start signing. I'm going to ask a question yeah, from you Lucas. Go ahead. Lucas is getting a little up close and personal here. 
He asks, who was your favorite leading lady to work with uh, and why? And he says, come on, be honest. That's my wife, man. <laughs> Isn't that a good answer? That's a great and answer. And so true. And you met her on a film set. I met her on a film called Rancho Deluxe. And, uh, yeah, it was love at first sight as far as I was concerned. Um, and, uh, you know, she ought to have a credit on all my all my movies because I, I I wouldn't be able to do what I do if it wasn't for her. And as far as actresses, God, I've been I've had really great luck, you know, with that. I'm thinking of uh, you know working with Michelle Pfeiffer on Fabulous Baker, Baker Boys. Boys. Yeah. That was kind of a twofer, you know. I got to do you know a movie with my brother Bo and Michelle. That was great, you know. Uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal was spectacular oh, sure. to work sure. with, you know. I've been just very, very lucky on that problem. All right, let's see what we got here. We got... I'm thinking of another woman I got to work with whose picture that? is in here. Valerie Perrine, who just recently passed away. Wonderful, uh, wonderful actress. Yeah. I think she passed away. <laughs> Isn't Jesus. that terrible? <laughs> Isn't that terrible? Well, Valerie, if, you, if, if, you're, uh, if you're watching but, right now... no. No, I have not, you know, she's, I know she's feeling <laughs> particularly ill, gosh. Oh, uh, that's... But, uh, you know, well, <laughs> wonderful act. I got to work with her twice. We're just going to... We're going to check with our, our crack uh, research <laughs> yeah, team. Oh, man. <laughs> and find out. Find out. We'll get back. We'll that's get back what happens. On that. When you're live, you're live, man. We're live. Listen, this is not... This is not a rehearsed deal here. Um, okay, here's another question. And, hey, this is a good one. How did you get into photography? Oh, uh, well. And that was, that was uh, Kaya Resch from Norman, Oklahoma. I uh, borrowed or I stole my father's Nikon. You know, he had one of, you know, an F, what were they, F2? Probably an FM2 or, or an F2, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, started taking pictures of my friends and uh, set up a little dark room in my bathroom. You know, where oh, I put you did. the tin foil on the thing and I got a little Bessler and larger, you know, and the NACO fix and all that stuff. And just started to crank it out, you know. And something about seeing that image come out of that soup, isn't that a wild oh, thing? Oh yeah, man? it never gets old. Yeah, it never gets old. It's so exciting. I remember the first time I I really got into photography was when there was a dark room at college that you could uh, they didn't close, and I would spend the entire night in the dark room. Oh, and I just love oh, yeah, that. Oh, the time. Yeah. You've got that red light and the tunes going. Forget them. Oh, yeah. Huh? The, the cassette deck. Yeah. And I, and I remember the first time that I became aware of this Wide Lux camera, which, um, as Sam was pointing out, it's really kind of a special thing, and it really you know, makes the photographs uh, you know, kind of unusual in the book, is the camera almost has, uh, like, um, peripheral vision or something. You know, you... And it's a, you're, you're not a, it's not a through the lens thing. You're kind of looking through a viewfinder, so it's not real accurate. You don't know what you're going to get exactly. Uh, but uh, this uh, this kind of capricious quality of the of the camera, um, and the fact that it's almost a uh, a cross between a moving camera and a still camera because there's actual movement, you know, of, right. of the lens. And the first time I ever came across this camera was in high school, and there was a rumor going around that there was a photographer coming in to take our class picture, and then he had this camera that if you ran around real quick, you could be in it twice, you know? <laughs> and I said, oh, that's impossible, but here it comes, and I see it, of course, because it's a if, they, if you put it at 15th of a second shutter speed, which normally people can't hand hold, but with this particular uh, camera, that shutter is a little bit more forgiving. It goes about this long. So you have that much time to jack around with your image, you know. And you can get a uh, guy in the high school, you know, run around and you're in there twice, you know. And so it was true. And you showed up twice in the Yeah. Picture. And I've got a, a slew of pictures in this uh, book that kind of show that uh, yeah, here's, one, one. here's one of George Clooney where I got a series of uh, actors doing tragedy and comedy their faces kind of like the Greek you know tragedy and comedy masks and this is something 
that we can do with this kind of camera. It's so cool. It, yeah. And like you're talking about, there's that there's that point in the middle where there's all well, this motion. That's where we moved it. Yeah. Right. That's where we, where we moved. Let's have, let's go to another question here. Karen from West Yorkshire mm -hmm. wants to know if you love bowling. I don't really love bowling. I mean, I don't do it. I don't dis. I don't hate it, but it's not something I go. Oh, bowling! Let's go bowling. Do you remember? I photographed you for the 10-year anniversary of the Big Lebowski for Rolling Stone magazine, and I took you to a bowling alley in Santa Monica. Uh, and you had the jelly shoes on and the outfit and the whole oh thing. Oh my god! <laughs> and we ended up doing a picture in the uh, on the actual uh, bowling alley. And I remember I got in trouble because I asked you to walk down the lane, uh -huh. and apparently you're not supposed to walk. Oh, of course. On the yeah. actual bowling alley. Well, so Karen, sorry. No. Yeah, yeah. What's that? She's not. Oh, 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 well, okay, we, oh. Okay, we've got it up So now i got to say something. Valerie Perrine is not dead. Well, that's good to hear. Shit, Valerie. <laughs> God, I feel so terrible. Well, I feel much better that she's alive. That is really a good attitude, man. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? And we're all going to kick it soon. It all happens very so fast, man, doesn't it? Uh, it well, it's happening faster and faster as yeah, I get older. Exactly. It seems like time speeds up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I feel... This is taking a weird turn. I feel, it is taking a weird turn. But, you know, it makes me want to <laughs> show uh, some Valerie pictures. Yeah, let's find yeah, one. Yeah, You know, so, while you're looking for that, yeah, you I'm, I'm going to answer, or I'll, I'll ask another question. And if you don't like to, if you don't want to answer it, I'll yeah, answer it. Yeah, go ahead. Um... Oh, here's one. Joe from Hollywood, Pencil Hollywood, Pennsylvania wants to know a favorite story about your dad. Oh, man. <laughs> I've got this up, several pop up, yeah. Uh, I wonder which one I should tell. I'm going to tell a couple of them or what? I, miss it. I, I could go on and on. I'll tell a, a, a sea hunt uh, okay. story. So, a lot of uh, people don't know your dad could yeah, swim. Da yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> But uh, he uh, had such fun doing this uh, sea hunt, you know, thing, and uh, the sea hunt uh, TV show, and uh, everybody thought he was a, a skin diver, you know. So you'd get all of these, um, you know, oceanographers and scientists and you know, uh, coast guards, admirals, and everything would treat him like he was an expert, and they said, "Lord, I've got to take you to our best diving." spot uh, in Hawaii, you know, you'll really love this. And uh, I said, okay, so now we're out, you know, and I'm about, you know, 12 or something like that, maybe younger 10, and we're out in the really rough seas. And my dad, he's getting seasick, terribly <laughs> seasick, and he doesn't want to puke in front of these guys, you know, he's right. trying to hold the area, basically. And I said, are you okay, Daddy? He goes, no, I'm getting the water over here. I said, okay. So now we come to this spot, and it's one of those incredible spots where you look down. It looks like it's about 10 feet deep, but it's really like 150 feet deep. Really that's how flow the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm anxious to get in there, you know, and my dad says, okay, I'm going to get in the water. And he does this famous, you know, flip, Mike Nelson flip into the water. He's in there, and I jump in. I'm going down to the bottom like this, and I feel a tug on my fin. And it's my dad, and I'm saying, what, what's going on? He goes, and I go, I just, and he goes, and I go like this, and he goes, ah, and he pukes underwater. <laughs> and all of these fish, a whole school of fish, <laughs> eat all the chunks for about 10 seconds. And then he looks at me and goes, I don't know why that, why I tell that story, but that's what popped up. Oh, I, well, how do you follow up a story yeah. about, get, you know, Valerie with... Oh, here, I, know, found Val, I found Valerie here up. now. This is a shot um, from a movie that I'm going to be showing at uh, the Motion Picture and Television Fund. It's a film that not too many people have, saw, have seen, but one of my favorite ones to make. It's called The Amateurs, and Valerie was in that. We also did a... a a movie together that we had a great time on called uh, The Last American Hero. I got to play a race car driver. But here's a picture of uh, 
Valerie. She's lying on the bed. You can't really see that. I'm going to show you a different picture of her. I like this picture of all these oh, women. Yeah, that's huh? a great picture. That's Valerie in the foreground, huh? And all those different ladies and all the... For some reason, that talks to me. I don't know why. It's an amazing photo. Huh? Isn't it interesting? And there's generations. And yeah, you know what yeah. else I love about your book? And I thought of this as I looked at this picture. Nobody is putting on a show for you, for your camera. They oh, are at yeah, I work. don't like that. I don't like the po He tried not to Yeah, get the and they are at work. Unless it's a tragedy and comedy. Right, they don't right. Play on that. And, and I love that, that, that you really get a sense that these are people that are hard at work. And they're not, they're, they're not, a, they're not worried about your camera being up vanity-wise. And I feel like you get a real sense of a working actor in, yeah. in your pictures. Let's do another uh, question here. Uh, John from Hickory, North Carolina wants to know, Beatles or Stones? Oh, oh, both, man. I just recently Googled uh, Mick Jagger uh, getting uh, the Beatles into uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Have you seen that? I have not. It's really beautiful and so sweet and he's so kind of genuine and candid and talking about those early days with those two guys. Can you imagine what that was like back in those days I, with I can't those imagine. guys? I can't imagine just being in London <laughs> and going out to a club and there's Eric Clapton and the Beatles oh. and the Stones and uh, they're all just hanging and, out. And aren't the Beatles still state of the art? I mean, isn't that, you know, it, we haven't we haven't gotten past that, yeah, have we? I mean, yeah. well, I just went and saw Paul McCartney with my daughter oh, wow. at the Dodger Stadium. Uh -huh. And I was shocked at how Paul McCartney at this stage in his life still, there's no one that can touch him as a performer. Uh, like, in terms of just standing there with a ukulele and singing a song. And he's having such fun, right? I know it. I'll tell you somebody who can uh, touch him as a performer, who I saw last night, Bob Dylan, man. He is in great form, man. Oh. It's kind of incredible. These Isn't guys it are wonderful? still going. I love it. Yeah. Well, I tell you, I met the Rolling Stones once in my life. I got invited to, someone had tickets and they invited me. And, and, uh, there did was you dig their blues album, by the way? I did. Isn't I did that like cool? that. I yeah. That. But I got taken backstage for a quick photo op. And, and so there's a picture of me out there standing there with all the Rolling Stones. And my face is a little disappointed because they're all tiny. Oh, and right. I'm standing there towering over them. Yeah. <laughs> And it, you know, you, you always you always think of these rock and roll heroes as these giant people on stage. Oh, it was a thing that you weren't taking their picture. No, you were getting your picture, I was getting taken my picture with, taken with them. With them. I... It's pretty funny. Gosh. Let's see. Let's let's find another question here. Um, okay, here's here's a question from Mary in New Harmony, Indiana. What are some of your major influences? people and places as a photographer? Well, you're a very inspiring cat. I dig you. We just did a Thank little you. session and how you come up with, you know, thoughts and this, and it's like a playful thing. You know, I feel like we're jamming together, you know. And it's I interesting that. how each, um, how each photographer, uh, it's like almost like working with a, you know, a different director. There's sure. all these different things. Yeah, you know, I remember getting pictures with uh, Avedon, you know, who was very, you know. What was that but, like? Just very quick, you know, just, no, you know, no, you know, he had just, I think he had, those, remember those big portraits? Remember? Yeah, on, on he, white. Yeah, the, yeah. In the American West. Yeah, very, you know, very, you know, quick. There are some guys who, uh, you know, I think of that memory, this probably influenced you as being a photographer. Maybe it was a little bit before you turned a blow up, you remember? Oh, that yeah. Movie? yeah. You remember David Hemmings? Yeah. Oh, come on, baby, give me more. You know, there's those right. kind of guys. And then Isn't that based huh? on uh, David Bailey? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. And um, so, you know, and uh, dear friends, one of my high school buddies is Richard Mizrak. Really? Yeah. No kidding. And so he's inspired me. Lartigue, I'm a big fan of Lartigue. Yeah. And I believe he's a this French guy, you know, around you know turn of the century or something like that, that captures this kind of, you know, capriciousness of life, you know, rather than uh, you know a lot of those photographs at that time are quite stiff, you know, very, yeah, very much. and stuff. But his were like, what are the kind of snapshots? Uh, and I also think he used a um, a wide lux type camera. 
Really? Yeah, I think so. You know who got me uh, uh, for a and, long time was yeah. Andre Cortez. Uh-huh. And, and his, you know, he was sort of the more, he was more the artistic uh, side of the, the school of Henry Cartier ever saw him, of, of, of yeah. the, the decisive moment. But Cortez had this, this artistic side to him that, that seemed so, so just uh, improvisational. It seemed like he was able to make art in, in places where other people would just make documents. And I always yeah. liked that. I was like Mary Ellen Mark. Well, she, I was going to say, I yeah. was fortunate. She was my mentor. You know, she was. She my, was. Well, she was my uh, the set photographer on a movie called American Heart, okay. that was based on that essay that she did for Look or Life on those kids in Seattle living in uh, you know on the it, street. homeless kids, right? Yeah, yeah. And junkies and stuff on the street, and her husband Martin Bell made a wonderful documentary called Streetwise yeah. based on those photographs. And then we made a dramatization of that called American Heart that Martin Bell also directed. And Mary Ellen was our uh, set photographer. And so she, you know, I, I just learned so much from her. I think she started out as a set photographer, right? I think so. Because she did that picture of Fellini. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah. That, yeah. And she's the one who sort of probably gave me the romantic notion that being a still photographer was a was a uh, you know a position of prestige or art, artistry yeah. and then I went and out and did it on a few movies and I'll tell you if you're it's not tough. if you're not uh, you know Jeff Bridges in the center of the action it, it can be pretty tough yeah do you know do you know a guy named uh, Sid Baldwin does that name ring a bell mm -hmm. he was a a set photographer uh, back on Starman and okay. that was the first movie that I started to make these little uh, books as a gift to the cast and crew, that these larger books, volume one and two, are kind of, you know, uh, based on those smaller books. Right. Some of the better, you know, shots are my favorite shots from that. And uh, Karen Allen, who was in uh, Starman with right. me, she said, why don't you take some of your wide luck shots that you're doing, some of Sid Baldwin's, and we'll make a book together. So that one, the first book I made was, uh, a, you know, Starman, and it was uh, with uh, Sid Baldwin. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that, that there was another photographer in yeah. that first one. Yeah. That's interesting. Let's do another, uh, let's do another question here. Katie wants to know, let's see, well, that's a little personal. <laughs> let's, let's do this one. Um, Sharon from Mount Pleasant, South, South Carolina wants to know if you knew when you were gifted in photography, like if you knew you, you had sort of a, a knack for it after you'd become an actor. Like, do you ever, yeah. do you see yourself, maybe a better question is, do you see yourself as an artist with, with a camera? Yeah, I'm looking at this shot right here, which is not a wide left shot. It's a shot I took of my wife. Yeah. Uh, oh, she's holding think, up. Yeah, a, and that was before we were married. No, she's got a leaf tucked in her, you know, shirt. This is kind of one of the things, you kind of do these, like, you know, that shot of me with the pic, you know, the drawing. Yeah, and so covering so your face. Yeah, yeah. So that was my version of her. And I, you know, I like that. It's weird when you do something and then you're kind of pleased by it, and uh, you're kind of surprised. You're, oh, wow, what happened there? You know, that's uh, one of the things that happens in movies as well because you, um, you know, you do the work, and then uh, somebody makes a collage out of your work. You know what right, I mean? Because right. you, you don't have much say all, most often. And sometimes you dig the collage and sometimes you don't. But often, the collage is much better than what you, how you remember it going. And that kind of um, excitement is what you know, brings me back. And you know, it, you know, every once in a while, uh, it exceeds your expectations. That's the cool thing when that happens. Don't you think? I mean, you, know, yeah. you must have that as well. Well, I, I, what I really relate to is the idea that you can see something and surprise yourself. And, and I think when that happens, for me, it, it's almost like, you know, oh, who took that dot? I, yeah. Because that doesn't look like, that looks like, you know, something a little more grand than I thought I was capable of. So yeah. I think the reason I 
always been drawn to photography no matter what else I'm doing is that there's a chance for there's a chance to control it and make your art and all that but there's also a chance for a mistake to surprise you and then it seems like something is landing on you rather than you you're willing it into yes don't you love that I love, I love that, that yeah. thing and you get that so much in the movies too you know you you go into your uh, hotel room you learn your lines you figure out how you're going to do the scene and then you get there and uh, it's not a sunny day it's raining and you've got to do this and oh that's not fitting my pictures you know but those are all you know directions from the big the big guy or the, you know the universe or whatever happens yeah and to play with that on that uh, you know, level is uh, it's just so such a gas you know does that happen when when you you sort of have a plan for how you plan to approach a scene and then you get there and and you find yourself in completely uncharted waters and it's okay oh yeah yeah often often is that the hope is the hope that you can throw away the uh you can throw away the plan and find something better in the moment uh well it's nice to have that thing to you know re you know to rest on right to go back you know that you have something to go back but you know I approach it often a lot like photography you know how photography has affected my acting in photography you often bracket your exposures right, That's right. you know you under and over then you put one where you think it is and I like to do that with my when I'm acting performances you know you'll figure out kind of what's the pocket where you think it's gonna go and then I like to work with the director to find out what are the parameters? How far can we go this way, and how Before far can we go far. that? Yeah, yeah. And then, and we play with those parameters. Sometimes take it too far, because you never know. Like I was saying, it's a collage, you know. And they're, you so you and you're working on this collage together. You do your part, but then the editor and the director are going to do their part, and you want to give them as much material that they can make work you know and you shoot out a sequence so it's not this linear telling of the story right. so you might say gee maybe after I do that scene that I haven't done yet maybe it would be appropriate for the scene we're doing now to take that shape instead of a more yeah you know, straight take. that's a right? lot of trust though huh? to get, it's a lot of trust to give someone a, a performance that you know you're trying to find maybe that was but, too you know, far that but was, then I, learned, there it is. I learned that lesson on my very first movie Called. It'll come to me in a second. Called. I'm gonna hit my publicist over there. Uh, 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 I don't know if I know you. No, no, no. It's got, it'll come to me in a second. Um, maybe it won't. <laughs> <laughs> There's a movie about. Halls of Anger was called about bussing white kids into a black school. Oh right, yes, I read about this. And it was my first movie, and uh, I was also it was the time when I was going through my first heartbreak. I, you know, I, you know, you must have gone, through, you know, like in high school, you know, oh, yeah. you had that thing. Mine lasted like for years. You know, terrible pain in my heart. Really, you really got your heart broken. Oh, it was just, you know, just devastating. And I was able to do some kind of acting judo and take this emotion that I was feeling about this girl and turn it over into this scene, which was, you know, I was the white kid trying to integrate into the black school, you know, a busing kind of thing. Yeah. And the, the black kids kept beating me up, you know. And so the boys' vice principal, Calvin Lockhart, was trying to get me to stay with it, you know. And uh, this, this is a big climax of the movie, and the kid, black kids have beaten me up, and now there's a big crowd around me, and the boys' vice principal's there. He says, you got to stick in there. You know, it's a big emotional scene for me. And I'm, uh, they start, they do his shot first, and I'm able to kick into that emotion. You know, I said, oh, man, I got to, you know, cry, and everything it was kind of appropriate for the guy. But then they went to do the coverage of all the people around, and I kept it fresh and then they got over to me and I said am I gonna dry up I've done it you know 20 times now right you gave it all in the no, master man, I was just there I was again there and I you know I got a little applause from the crew you know and I said hey maybe maybe this is my thing maybe I can do this you know now we cut you know four or five months later and we're seeing the 
the premiere in, in Watts. And you so haven't seen it yet. No, I haven't seen it. So, you know, my brother is on one side, my father is on the other side, and here comes my scene. You know, I'm saying, wait, well, you guys, I see this. See what the younger bridges yeah, can yeah. do. Yeah, <laughs> and here it comes, and the camera stays on the boy's <laughs> vice principal, you know. And I said, when are you going to cut to me, man? <laughs> and they cut to me, and my face is something like this. <laughs> and the crowd, you know, the audience bursts out laughing. And I just about had a bowel movement. And I mean, I said, oh, God, to elicit the antithesis, you know, of what you want, the, you know. Yeah. And it, it's and amazing it was you ever major, made another film. Well, it was a major thing because, you know, as you say, you know, how do you protect yourself, you know? And you don't. You've got to give it up to the guys that do their part, you know, the director and yeah. the editor and all of these guys that you're going to be in their hands. And so it just, it just, uh, you know, brought home this whole idea of give it up, man. Just do it and don't care so much about the results, but dig what's going on right now. Dig how wonderful it felt that they feel that, oh, that doing that acting judo, learning that kind of thing. and. And just and, let it go. And, once let, the and let it done. go because you never know. And sometimes the opposite happens. You know, they enhance. You say, God, I thought, I didn't think it was going to be that good, man. And look what you guys did, you know. That yeah. is a great lesson. I mean, yeah. when you think about, you think about how many people, you know, had the opposite experience that they controlled something and then it worked out and then they, they feel like now I've got, there you go. I got yeah. to control it. But for you to have such a disaster right out of the gate, then you're like, well, I got no control over yeah. this oh, thing yeah, and yeah. I'll just, I should just yeah. not worry play, about it. Yeah, play, play, yeah. Maybe that's, maybe that's one of the secrets of why you're able to do this so well and for so long is that you, are, you aren't holding on to it so tightly, you know? Yeah. Yeah, have fun. As my mom used to say, you know, she'd send me off to work, and I'm an anxious guy. You know, I, you know, I, 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 I get, a, 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 you know, bouts of anxiety, and my mom, I'm off to work, and my mom would say, Jeff, Jeff, remember, man, have fun, and don't take it too seriously. So she knew and even that, back then and you that, had anxiety. Oh man, that just, oh, thank you, mom. And now my wife Sue will say that same thing, and it's like. It's not even corny anymore. It's just like, oh God, I forget that. Have fun. Don't take it too seriously. You know that T W. You know T O O. You know that. You can take it seriously, but have fun taking it seriously. Yeah, yeah. You know, what's your anxiety hour? The, as soon as I wake up. Really. In the morning. As soon as I wake up, I go, oh God, another one of these. <laughs> I don't know. How about you? Uh, well, yeah. Like, huh? 5 a.m., 4 a.m. Oh, yeah. Right. oh, yeah. yeah. If, if I happen tough. to wake up before, you know, the rest of the world and I've, I've got some time by myself, it can, that can be tough. Yeah. And what's happening here? Someone is getting uh, a very gonna, special uh, Yeah, I was book. just going to, yeah. See, now this is, this is like everyone watching right now is saying, God, that's the book I want. I don't just want the signature. I want the original portrait. Yeah of you probably having anxiety. Yeah. Is that what's happening here? God, I love your I love your style. Be happy. I think we know who's getting this book. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, should we should we get to another question okay. here? Okay. You know, I, this is a whole new way to I like this. Someone else yeah. does all the research, makes yeah. up the questions, and I just... Yeah, isn't that it? Yeah. You just get the hang, man. All right, here's a good question. Which musician would you have lo most loved to have met, and why? So maybe this this supposes a musician you didn't get to meet. Oh, yeah, because I've met some really cool ones. Yeah, you know. you've been... I got to work with Bob, you know, in a movie we did called uh, Master and Anonymous. That's right. That was just so incredible. He's such a great actor, great, uh, you know, just to be on the planet when that guy's alive. Gosh, it's wonderful. But uh, what, do you, what was the question? Other well, people I mean, that I just hadn't met, that that had you, met. Yeah. Oh. Uh, 
it's funny, my brain doesn't work that way. Isn't that weird? I, you know, I, I don't have any, you know, names of guys. Did I'll you ever say, meet oh, yeah. John Lennon? Uh, you know, when I, uh, when they came over here in 63 or four or something, they were in a, uh, they were from some charity event, and the four of them were on bar stools in some guy's backyard, and people paid a hundred bucks, whatever. They go by and shake their hand, and uh, you know, we went. My dad took us there. Went over really? There, and uh, let John saw my dad. And he went. Boop, you know, he knew. Yeah, so yeah, he knew. So yeah, that was very cool. Wow. So you must but have been I, what? You know, just uh, shook, 13, 14 yeah, years old. Yeah, something like that. You know. Did, were you aware at the time? I mean, did it seem like a big deal at the time? Oh, gosh, of course, man. Yeah. You remember, well, you know, you're younger than I am, but gosh, man, high school, every week they would come out with, you know, it was just, and you could count on it. It just kept coming, and oh, what a, you know, I guess every era, every you know, generation thinks their music is the best, but oh, man, I, you know, I... I well, love the good music. Uh, absolutely. Dylan, yeah. the Beatles. Of and Bo, you know, I, coming out of my big brother's room was all the, uh, you know, Buddy Holly, Little Richard, Chuck Berry, all was that good, original eight stuff. Eight years older than you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you did you get to go see some of these shows? Like, did you see the Beatles ever? Uh, I never saw the Beatles. I love that Ron Howard movie. Wasn't it? Oh, eight, eight Days, days a week. week. And the and the Shea thing at the end? Wasn't yeah. that spectacular, really, man? Really great. Gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you should have taken advantage of that. You should have gone and seen him while you had the chance. Yeah, exactly, man. You know. How are we doing here? Let's see. You're, you're getting through these books. Oh, yeah, man. I'm, I... Okay. I like this. Angelo. Let's give this thing a go. If you want one okay. of these books. Good idea. If you want one of these you're books. You're a much better host than me. Go to premiercollectibles.com slash pictures that's right cool and if you go there i think there's 1500 total and they're going to sell out so maybe you'll get one of these special ones where jeff draws a picture oh yeah oh there you, know? you go yeah there's, there's two in existence but actually yeah, only gonna one keep going. I, they're gonna keep I took going. one get some more drawing in here let's see a lot of photography questions but we've sort of answered those oh here's a good one Mary wants to know some tips on keeping an amazing relationship alive after so many years. Yeah. Um, and I'm assuming, I'm assuming she means with Sue. Yeah. Right. Not with me. <laughs> Let's see. The secret? Well, you know, what pops into my mind is that James Taylor too, right? The secret of life is enjoying the passing of time. You know. That's right. But, I mean, just... Uh, you know, digging each other, digging the intimacy. I think that's the main high in life, isn't it? Intimacy, wanting to be intimate kind of with life itself and with people that you love and stuff. And, and uh, you know, uh, I believe for myself, that I'm kind of addicted to comfort. I like being comfortable. You know, yeah. I don't like being uncomfortable. Except uncomfortable, uncomfort is you know part of life. You're not going to be comfortable all the time, you know. So, so what do you do when you're uncomfortable, and how do you kind of work with that, you know? And uh, I think you can take those uncomfortable times, and those can actually be the kind of the the key to your happiness, or to you know, when the, the 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 goal of of life can be in those very tough times. Those are like gifts. They're saying. Okay, here's this. Here's the lesson. We've been invited to attend this college, and this is what it looks like. You go, ooh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how to do it. Okay, well, but here you are. What do you want to do? You want to kind of go to sleep, or you want to wake up and get into it? Right. And so, marriage. I, you know, I had such a tough time getting married because you know, I didn't want to lose my autonomy. You know, I didn't want I, on all the other girls that I couldn't see and all those things. But marriage is this wonderful playing field or game board of intimacy you know it's like this is the person that you get to practice intimacy with you know so when sue and i hit a bump and, we, and we'll hit them you know we it, and they kind of happen less and less but we hit a bump 
and the bump is usually a form of, I call it like our, our primal war, our ancient war, is you don't get it. You just don't get it, what it's like having to live with you and you being who you are, and you don't get it. You don't understand what that's like. And that's such an accurate <laughs> assessment, you know. That's every we, fight, isn't it? Because we much. really don't know, we really don't know. So it's true, and, and my thing, I say yes, and that's what we have in common, that you don't understand me, I don't understand you, and yet we love each other. So let's, how do we work with it? How do we practice? And we sit, you know, we'll get sit across from each other about this close, and you turn around, so you're like yep. facing me like that, and we get this close, and we have this bump, whatever it is, and you say, okay, now you go, and you just t tell your bump, and my task is just to receive you, just to hear you, not to uh, catalog all my responses that I'm going to say when you stop, but to just let it hit you, and really receive it, and then when that you run out. Now I just do my thing, you know, you just say it and just receive it, receive it. And you do that a couple of times. Sometimes it you 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 get it. You somehow do get it. You know, you get yeah. each other. And sometimes you don't, but even in the not getting it, you you've gotten closer and you've practiced this it this practicing of the intimacy scratches that itch that oh, we're fucked. You know, we're you know what I mean? Right, and you get to articulate it. And you get to articulate yeah. it, and you just kind of, you know, practicing that intimacy, you know. Where'd you learn that? Um, gosh, I'm wondering where I learned that. I don't really know. I know, uh, well, one of the things is kind of re a reaction to my mother and father. Uh, my mother, who is very uh, gregarious and uh, really one, you know, wants to get to the bottom of things, and my dad, See the silent. He was no, not silent. It, if it was a conversation that he didn't want to be a part of, he would burst out in song. Oh, what a beautiful morning! You really? know, just did not, you know. <laughs> and my mom would be, and he would. Oh, what a beautiful day! You know, he just, you know, did he not. Just, he just, yeah, pulled he out was, some Oklahoma. And he's yeah, like, I'm not yeah, having this yeah. conversation. Yeah, he was, like, you know, compartmentalizer. You know compartmentalize all those things, you know, and he said, that's the way I handle, you know, my life, you know. I bet that drove your mom crazy. And it did, it did, but they hung in, you know, all of the, you know, they went through some really tough times, and, but they, they hung in, you know. Hey, yeah, it's fascinating to think of how, how much, you know, we were talking about this a little while ago, how you either take the example of your parents and you repeat it, yeah. or you take it and you use it to go a different path. Yeah. But either way, it's helpful whether or not it's good behavior or not. You yeah. Know? There's that story, uh, you know, of, uh, they're doing a, you know, some kind of uh, research or something, and there were these two uh, twin brothers born uh, uh, from an alcoholic father. You know, okay. His dad was an alcoholic, terrible alcoholic. And as it turned out, one of the brothers became a terrible alcoholic, and the other didn't. And when the interviewer asked him, you know, why did you become an alcoholic to this alcoholic brother? He said, well, my father, you know. Right. And he asked the same question to the non-alcoholic brother, why did you know you not become an alcoholic? He said, my father, you know, <laughs> right? Like yeah. you said, he said there's, there's something in there, you know, to learn either way. And, you know, what lesson are you going to Learn yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, we got about five more minutes, so uh, I think I think that I'll I'll do a few more questions, and then if you wanna if you wanna put a few more drawings like you're doing now, yeah. I think that's so exciting for people that they might they might end up with one of these. Um, once again, just because there's five minutes left, PremierCollectibles.com/pictures is the place to get one of these books before they sell out. And, and like I said before, the, there's a few that with, with some pretty special, unique drawings inside. So. Yeah, and also let me plug this movie that some of you yeah. guys hadn't seen called Living in the Future's Past. And uh, that's all about uh, the climate change we're going through. And it's a little different uh, perspective on it. It's not so much pointing fingers at the bad guys or talking about how uh, dire the straits we're in. But... Um, 
trying to, how do we create the kind of world that we want to uh, live in and uh, hopefully it inspires individual action and uh, and we're, we're, we've got some curriculums that are based on it, teaching it in schools, we're getting in cahoots with Costco, they're really su very supportive. But, so that's just another thing I want to put out there that I'm excited about. Yeah, definitely something to check out. Um, let's see, let's do one more question. I'm gonna find a really, really good one to close on here. Oh, here's a good question. Gina M. from Baltimore, Maryland wants to know if you're gonna re-release volume one in oh. this series for those who may have been out of the loop the first time around. You know, I hope so. Um, I guess it depends how well this one goes and if there's a demand. I, um, you know, when you make a book, you get these book blocks, you know, that are they're just the guts of the book and not the cover. Right, yeah. And I found a bunch of uh, book blocks from Pictures Volume 1, and I'm going to make a few, maybe a hundred, you know, get a sleeve and put both of them in there. And so, oh, right. you know, that's maybe what's happening. So yeah. maybe a, a special edition, a small yeah, one or something yeah. like that. And then at some point, I'd like to, I've got those uh, small books. At some point, I'm going to get sleeves for those small books oh, and yeah. put those out. So well, those small books are so interesting because there's more pictures of the crew. And yeah. you sort of get a little sense of, of all the people that worked on the film. And, and yeah. obviously, when you first started making them, they were gifts for everybody that had been That's on right. the film. Uh, but they're also their own little story because they're, you know, unlike unlike these big volumes, there's there's more images of from each film, and yeah. I like looking at those. Yeah, I know. Stories, yeah, so. me too. Gosh, I, I hope people are, you know get a chance to see those at some point too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I think we're just about. Is that done about here. it? What yeah. do you think? How are we doing? Yeah, well, a little bit more, a little bit more over here. You give that classic uh, sign, man. He's a little more. This is a little more. Right? Yeah, a little yeah. more. A little more. Let's do a little more. Let's do one more question then. Oh, look, we're at the bottom of the questions. Oh, I skipped some. Um, oh, here's a. <laughs> Paul from Boulder City, Nevada says, How often do you get to Fargo, North Dakota? Oh. I am a North High grad who went to school with your wife. Isn't that How do you something? Like that? That's a, her mom was a teacher. Maybe this person had a class with Sue's mom. I don't get there very often, actually. Well, you know, maybe you've got to go out there and do a signing. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah, maybe so. In Fargo. Yeah. You know, the, the dude, the Coens, there's oh, a lot of Fargo exactly connections. A lot of, yeah. Um, Jeff, thanks for, thanks for doing this and for making this available to people because, you know, as someone who, who I've known you for a long time now, though, if, if I hadn't seen your pictures, I don't think I would have recognized who you really are inside. You know what I mean? There's a barrier up when you meet a, an actor, a famous person, or whatever. Um, but talking photography with you and seeing what a craftsman you are has, has kind of opened up a chance to have a new friendship with you. So yeah. I think these books are important for f on, on that level, too, just for people to be able to, you know, get a sense that, that you can take your life in all different directions. Isn't you know? that the truth? Yeah. I feel moved to tell a joke, man. Oh, good. And this is a joke that I think a Harrison, I heard Harrison Ford tell, tell in a talk show. Okay. There's this guy, he's going ice fishing. Yeah. And he's, you know, puts, cuts the hole in the ice, drops his line in there, waits for you know, five, ten minutes. And he hears, there are no fish under the ice. And he says, what was that? Must be my mind. Maybe it's just my intuition. I'll just move 20 feet over here. Cuts another hole into the ice. Drops his line off. And about five minutes later, there are no fish under the ice. He says, God? Is that you? No, it's the rink manager. <laughs> a little, a little hockey levity. humor for you. Yes, there you go. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I feel compelled to to finish this with a riddle for you. Okay, hit me on it. What's the difference between beer nuts and deer nuts? Oh. Beer nuts and deer nuts. 
Yeah. Beer nuts are a dollar forty nine, and deer nuts are under a buck. <laughs> very <laughs> good. Very good. There you go. I think that's a good place to close. Yeah, this. yeah, man. Excellent. I want to thank everyone for tuning in yeah. to, to this live signing with Jeff, and it's been a pleasure to do this with you and to know you. Yeah, same here, Sam. Great, yeah. man. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Bye, everybody. See you later.